What's up, slappers? On my last video, hundreds of you asked me how to edit like Davey504. Epic. Some of you don't think I can do it. And that to me is just sad. Not epic. But today, I will do something I always do. Prove you all wrong. While my Italian accent may be terrible, my editing skills are not. Checkmate. Who edits Davey504's videos? What? He edit his own videos? Epic. But today, I show you some of the editing tricks that Davey504 use in his YouTube videos. Epic transition. All right, now that that's out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And if you haven't guessed already, today we are learning how to edit in the style of Davey 504. And I was actually really surprised. I went and did some research on who edits his videos, and I think he does. I mean, at least on LinkedIn, it has him as the editor of his videos, which if he does, bravo, amazing job. He's an insane bass player and a pretty good editor, enough to make you guys want to know how to edit like him. And I will just be completely honest, I didn't know about him until you guys suggested that I do a video on his videos. And ever since, I just can't stop watching him. Uh, as you can see in the background, I do have a bass. I used to play bass, uh, not anymore. I'm not gonna enter into any slap battles or anything like that, none of that. I'm just gonna tell you how he edits his videos and it is made up of a couple core components, starting off with the punch ins on the main camera. He does a lot of punching in and in and in on all of his videos in different varying intensities. He also has the coveted slap, which I will show you guys how to do in just a moment. He does a lot of things with scale width, not necessarily scaling uniformly, but just scale width. So your face gets really wide and goofy things like that. He's also using some spherized things on some of his videos and tilting in 3D space. I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Obviously the reverb audio when he says things like epic and wise choice. So that'll be fun. And of course he does the camera shake when things get really intense. He also has the manga lines that come in out of nowhere. And when he says something sad, the rain on screen. Anyway, those are the things that we'll be going through today. Open up Adobe Premiere, because we're getting started, but first, slap like now. All right, guys, the first thing we're gonna talk about today is the various punch-ins and also the slap effect that Davey504 likes to do all the time. So it's very, very simple. So here I have a clip. What's up, slappers? We're gonna do both at the same time. So here we're gonna go, what's up, what's up? And I'm gonna pause my clip, cut it right here, and then just go to my effect controls and just punch in to, I don't know, whatever you want, really, and then just reframe it in the frame. And you're gonna do this over and over again whenever you wanna do a little punch effect like Davey 504. What's up, slappers? And for the slap, what we're gonna do is right as your hand comes into frame, I want you to cut right there on the clip. We're gonna punch in on the scale and we're just gonna try to follow our hand as much as possible using keyframes. So what I'm gonna do is set a position and scale keyframe right up here, go one frame over, and I will just follow my hand just like so. We'll set a scale keyframe here and then we'll also scale in like that. And I'm just gonna follow my hand. What's up, slappers? And we can even cut it off right towards the end there. So like right as the camera starts moving, we can just cut it off right there. And of course, you're gonna wanna add your slap sound effect. I literally just typed in slap sound effect on YouTube and we got the sound. There you go, perfect. And I'm just gonna drop that right underneath my video. And now here we go, we've done the punch zoom in effect and the slap effect just on this one clip. What's up, slappers? And another thing he does as far as punching in is he will actually do a scale zoom. So I'm gonna delete that zoom right there and I'm gonna come in here to my effect controls, set a scale and position keyframe and I will go over one, two, three keyframes and then just scale up on the same clip without actually cutting it. And now you're gonna get that nice scaled zoom effect that you see in some of his videos as well. What's up, slappers? So there's two different types of effects. There is the cut and punch effect, and there's also the scale keyframe zoom effect. You'll see that a lot in a lot of his videos. They are effective in multiple different ways. Use them however you wanna use them. It's on you. All right, let's keep going. All right, now we're gonna look at the scale width effect that you see in a lot of his videos. Prove you all wrong. Great, looks good. What we're gonna do is just click on our clip, come up here to effect controls, and this little box right here that says uniform scale, you're gonna uncheck that, which will actually allow you to scale the width independent of the height. Usually when you do a uniform scale, it will scale all uniformly height and width at the exact same time. But when you uncheck that box, you are able to actually scale the width independently and you can start doing some really goofy stuff with that. So what you'll see a lot of the times is his face is really wide in frame. 
just like so. And you guys can do this as much or as little as you want. And these are key frameable assets as well. So if I set this back to 100 and set this back to 100 and we'll reset the position here, check this out, guys. I'm going to set a keyframe for scale height and scale width and then go over one, two, three, four, five keyframes. And let's set this to 400 and 400. I'm also gonna set a position keyframe so we can actually do this properly, move this down in frame. And now for my width, I'm gonna, instead of scaling it to 400, I'm actually going to scale it to, I don't know, 700. And now this is a key frameable scale. Prove you all wrong. And we can actually keep this going even wider if we wanted to, just like that. Prove you all wrong. And sometimes what you'll see in his videos as well is he will put a color effect on the scale width. And that's very easy. If you come up here to the color tab and go to your color wheels and match tab, you can just take your shadow color and you can just dip it up into the red orange. And you can also do the same thing with your midtones. You can also just crush the blacks a little bit and increase the midtones or the highlights to give it that effect. And now we have a scale width and color effect. Prove you all wrong. And you'll see this in various ways and formats on his channel, but that is the scale with sometimes with color effects option for you. All right, also while we're on the topic, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the weird distort transform thing with that looks like Thanos, but it's in 3D or whatever. Okay, let's keep going. Go to effects and type in sphere and put a distort sphere eyes right here on this clip. And we are going to increase the radius of the sphere eyes right down there, bubbling up the bottom of my face, looking real nice. We will move it down into frame and reposition it just a little bit, making the bottom of my face look very Thanos-esque, just like so. Then what we're gonna do is come up here and type in 3D, and we're gonna drop a perspective basic 3D right on that clip as well. And we are going to decrease the tilt angle, kind of sending it backwards just like so. And now what we'll do is just kind of scale that clip up and move it up in frame. And you guys can kind of do the fake 3D perspective tilt thing that you will often see in Davey 504 videos. And you can increase, decrease whatever the radius of this and kind of do whatever you want with it. You can add a wave warp instead of a sphere eyes, which will do something very similar, also different. But this is the basic functionality of how to do the tilt video in Premiere and adding an effect to it to kind of give you that weird warp perspective that you will often see. You can also add the same color treatment to this video just like we did for the scale width you can tint it orange or whatever you want to do you can zoom in on it as it's tilted you can do a lot of different stuff i'm just trying to give you the basic toolkit to go ahead and make videos like davy 504 okay let's move on all right next we have the reverb audio effect and here i have just a dry signal of me saying epic epic but that is not epic so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a reverb onto our timeline, come up here to window and go to audio track mixer and select your sequence. And then it will put a bunch of little boxes up here. Maybe yours looks like this. You don't actually see those, but this little tiny arrow right up here in the top left corner, click on that and drop down the menu. And what I would recommend doing is making a separate audio track for your reverb, which is very easy. So check this out. I'm gonna put it on audio five. I'm going to add a reverb, studio reverb, and here are kind of the settings that I found work best for the Davey 504 method. 80 on the room size, about 3000 here on the decay. We're gonna turn our high frequency cut all the way up, turn our low frequency cut to right around 400 or 500, depending on what you wanna do, and then turn your dry signal down to zero and your wet signal up to 100. And now you're done. So look at these settings, copy them. You can tweak them if you'd like. You can make the reverb longer or shorter, whatever. But this is kind of where I got as far as the Davey 504 reverb is concerned. We'll close out of that. I will cut my audio track right here. I will hold down Alt, click and drag down to my reverb track, which is audio five. So I'm putting it on audio five, which is where my reverb is here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. Epic. Now it is reverbing out when I say epic. And anytime you wanna add a reverb to anything, all you have to do is drag it onto that track. Epic transition. Right, just drag it down. Epic transition. And now I have a reverb attached to that track because all entirety of Audio 5 will be a reverb channel. So that makes it easy to just add reverb to pretty much anything. You just duplicate it down onto the selected track of choice. And now you have a reverb for whatever you want for your entire timeline. It is super easy. All right, let's move on to the camera shake. All right, so I definitely wanna add some camera shake to the epic transition moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to come down to the new item button and create an adjustment layer. Make it your composition size and drag it right on top of your footage, just like that. And what I'm gonna recommend doing is coming up here to your effects, typing in transform and dropping a distort transform right on that adjustment layer. Come up here to your effect controls and we are going to make the camera shake in the adjustment layer and I will show you why in just a minute. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our scale to 110. 
And then what we're gonna do is set our position right here at the very front, go over one keyframe, and just start adjusting your position, X and Y values, just a little bit per frame. And you don't have to go very far away from where you originally started because the farther away you go from the original, the more aggressive the camera shake will be. So we want the camera shake to just be really jittery and really kind of contained within itself. So that's why I'm not going too far. I'm just going left and right, up and down just a little tiny bit. And we'll do this for a little bit until I get bored, which is like pretty much right about now. And the nice thing about this is I can just go to the next keyframe, copy and paste all of these keyframes. And then I'm gonna take all these, copy, and I'm gonna go one frame over from the end, paste. One frame over from the end, paste. And you can actually just extend your adjustment layer if you'd like, because we're gonna save this as a preset once we get to the end. I'll do this two more times. Just copying and pasting all of these keyframes. There we go, we'll go to the end. And I will trim this layer back. And now check this out guys, epic transition. Now I have a really jittery camera shake on this adjustment layer. And what's nice about the adjustment layer and using transform is you can also come down here to this checkbox that says use composition shutter angle, turn that off. And now if I crank the shutter angle up, it will actually create a motion blur for that camera shake epic transition, right? Like 342 is a little aggressive, but maybe if we bring it back down into the ballpark of like 50 to 100, it'll create a nice motion blur on that camera shake. Epic transition. And now I made it longer than what I need it for because then I can just very simply come in here, right click on where it says transform in my effect controls and I'm going to save preset as camera shake one. I'm going to click anchor to endpoint to make sure that my preset copies appropriately and then hit okay. So now if I come down here, delete this adjustment layer, say you wanna add camera shake on anything else, right? I'm gonna just drag my adjustment layer right down here, right on top of where I want the camera shake, come up here to my effects, go to presets and look at that, camera shake one is right there. I'm just gonna drag and drop it straight onto my adjustment layer and now I have a camera shake that I can just kind of put anywhere that I want, even if I don't have the adjustment layer. It's just a really nice way for you to drag and drop onto the timeline. And what I would recommend doing is actually going through and making a wide variety of camera shakes so you can just save a bunch of presets. You can have like small, medium, large camera shake, a lot of motion blur, little motion blur, and you can just drag and drop onto the timeline and just keep going because that is kind of a time consuming thing to do from scratch every time. Don't recommend it, make presets. All right, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the manga lines. And I literally just went on Google and searched anime speed lines or manga lines and this came up. So it is a JPEG, it does have a black background. It is very easy to fix by clicking on your image, coming up here to the blend mode and setting it to lighten. That will get rid of all the dark parts of the image. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mess around with this just a little bit frame by frame and copy and paste. So first frame looks good. Let's go over one frame to the right. I'm gonna cut my clip there and I'm going to just scale it up a little bit from 150 to 190. Go over one more frame, cut it, and we're gonna rotate it to the right just a little bit. One frame, cut it, rotate it over to the left, over one frame, cut it. And now what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, is just copy this. Make sure that your video is set to video three and video one on video three, because this is the only way that you're gonna be able to copy and paste without going over anything else in your timeline. I don't know why, that's the dumbest feature ever. But anyway, now that video three and video one are selected next to each other, we can just copy and paste these manga lines. And now, ladies and gentlemen, epic transition. And what I can do underneath my adjustment layer is actually scale this bottom video if I wanted to, to make it even more epic. Epic transition. There we go, we got the manga lines, we got the camera shake, and we are scaling underneath. It is just so much fun here on Learn How to Edit Stuff. I mean, pff, mind blown, right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Slap like now, okay. All right, and the last thing we're gonna look at is the rain on the window effect. And guys, I literally just went to YouTube. I typed in rain on window, grab this first video, gentle rain sounds on window, used for relaxing, studying, meditation. Okay, great. It's nine hours long, holy mother of God. I downloaded it anyway using 4K video downloader. And then I just grabbed a very small piece of this and I'm gonna drag and drop it onto my timeline. So now you see, guys, Guys, we have these nice raindrops running down the window looking real sweet. I'm gonna click on that clip, come up to effect controls and switch the blend mode to screen. And that will give us a nice screened version of that rain on the window effect. And what I'm gonna also do just to sell it a little bit more and make it look a little bit better is come over here to my Lumetri color and crank down the shadows on that rain. And I'm also going to increase the midtones just a little bit. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit of color love to make it look a little bit nicer. Scale the video underneath just like so. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have the rain falling on the window. Sad Davy 504 plate 
similar to what he uses on his YouTube channel. And this can work for anything. If you want to grab fire on YouTube, you can put fire in, you can do some different blend mode things and put it on your video and just kind of collect a bunch of assets and throw them into your timeline and use them at your heart's content. I would recommend downloading some of his sound effects as well. The Metal Gear Solid what sound effect and also the anime yeah! sound effect is a great one to start off with if you're trying to copy his videos one for one. I don't recommend doing it, but I'm doing it. I understand it's a double standard, but you asked and now you receive. I haven't done a how to edit like video in quite some time. So this is my gift to you, Davey. I love you, no hard feelings. On top of all the things that we learned today, you're also gonna wanna develop a catalog and library of random graphics. If you watch Davey's videos, which maybe you do, maybe you don't, but he has like the little gun that comes up in the bottom of the screen, press B in the chat anytime somebody says bass. He has a lot of things that he's just developed in his library that suit his style. So I would recommend doing the same thing for you. Generate a bunch of little memes and GIFs and photos and all this stuff, sound effects, and have them ready to go so you can just drag and drop them onto your timeline so you're not spending a tremendous amount of time looking for things. You should just already have a catalog ready to go for your videos. But that about does it today for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something valuable today for going out and creating meme videos, I guess. We're just, we're, we're doing a lot of memes on this channel, but hey, we learned a lot of stuff today. They are useful techniques for pretty much any meme video that you want to do. Go back, rewatch this video, slap like now. Don't forget to subscribe. Laugh revealed that 5 million subs, but for real, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. If you guys have any suggestions, drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you want to learn. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.